हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू वर्षा ट्यूटोरियल्स स्टैंडर्ड सेवन साइंस लेसन नंबर फोर न्यूट्रिशन इन लिविंग ऑर्गेनिजम्स पार्ट फोर फॉर वाचिंग पार्ट वन टू एंड थ्री क्लिक द लिंक गिवन इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन बिलो इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी टू मोर इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक्स दैट इज स्टेप्स इन न्यूट्रिशन and types of nutrition in animals that is holozoic nutrition saprozoic nutrition and parasitic nutrition so let us begin with steps in nutrition first step in nutrition is ingestion that is intake of food that means food is taken into our body children can you name organ of ingestion in humans of course it's mouth children the food which we intake is in complex form and it cannot be absorbed by the blood so it has to be converted into simple form so that it is readily absorbed into the blood and this process is called as digestion so digestion means conversion of food into simple soluble forms after the food is converted into simple form it gets absorbed by the blood and this process is called as absorption so absorption is transfer of soluble food into the blood children our cells and tissue utilize the food absorbed by the blood for producing energy which we can use for growth repairing of wear and tear repairing of wear and tear means if we get any hurt it is healed why because our cells utilize the food absorbed by our blood in healing or repairing process also the absorbed blood is used for growth and this process is called assimilation so assimilation is utilization of absorbed food by the cells and tissues for energy production growth and repair during all the steps of nutrition a lot of food remains undigested and if it is not removed from our body it will turn into toxic and thus our other organs will not be able to perform their work efficiently so this undigested food and waste products have to be removed from our body and this process is called as ejection so ejection means removal of waste products and undigested food from our body holozoic nutrition holozoic nutrition is a type of heterotrophic nutrition in animals that is characterized by ingestion which means taking food through mouth now let's understand how ingestion occurs in unicellular animals like amoeba amoeba do not have specific ingestion organ like mouth so whenever there is food particle near it it tries to surround it with the help of its false feet called as pseudopodia you can see this false feet and as it surrounds the food particle gets inside and as soon as it gets inside this process is called as ingestion thus amoeba ingests the food particle with the help of false feet called as pseudopodia and after ingestion it is proceeded by digestion process and so on in unicellular organisms like amoeba euglena paramecium all steps of nutrition occurs in a single cell butterflies use tube like mouth part called as proboscis to suck its food food can be in the form of nectar or other juices see here you can see yellow like yellow part called as proboscis which helps the butterfly to suck its food then mosquitoes and bed bugs use needle like mouth part to pierce that is penetrate into the food and tube like mouth part to suck the food or other fluids according to the food type animals are classified as herbivores carnivores omnivores scavengers and decomposers and these each one of which we are going to study in detail herbivores use plants directly as the food 
for example deer cow buffalo goat etc there are some herbivores which feed on grains and they are called as grainivores for example pigeon sparrow crow etc other herbivores which feed on fruits are called as frugivores for example squirrel carnivores are the animals that depends on other animals for their food insectivores are the animals that feed on insects omnivores are the animals that obtain food from both plants and animals example hens monkey chimpanzee humans etc are all omnivores scavengers obtain their food from dead bodies of animals actually scavengers don't hunt or kill any other animal but they feed on the dead bodies hunted by other animals so here in this picture you can see hyena feeding on the dead bodies hunted by other animals so hyena is a scavenger other examples of scavenger is crow which also feeds on the dead bodies hunted by other animals then vulture is also another example of scavenger so hyena crow vultures are example of scavengers decomposers are the microbes which obtain their food by decomposing dead bodies of organisms or other materials example bacteria fungi etc children decomposers and the scavengers perform the function of cleaning and conserving the environment by the very act of feeding themselves isn't it very amazing saprozoic nutrition some insects unicellular animals etc obtain the nutrients by absorbing the liquid organic materials from the dead bodies of other animals or from the environment this is saprozoic nutrition children you can see best example is house fly feeding on the dead organism also the cockroaches feed on the dead food stuff ants also feed on the dead food stuff thus house fly cockroaches ants etc show saprozoic nutrition parasitic nutrition the animals that live in or on another organisms or animals that is host and benefits itself by sucking the nutrients from the host are called as parasites thus in parasitic mode of nutrition one organism is benefited while other organism is harmed for example when humans have lice on their head lice sucks the blood from human head thus lice is a parasite which is benefited and humans which are host are harmed similarly when we or other animals are attacked by the bed bugs bed bugs sucks the blood from the animals on which it lives thus bed bugs are parasites which are benefited and humans or other animals on which the bed bugs lives are harmed also when we are infected by the round worms round worms sucks its nutrition from human intestine and thus harming humans and benefiting itself also in parasitic nutrition we are going to study what is endoparasitic nutrition and ectoparasitic nutrition ectoparasitic nutrition the word ecto itself means outer so the ectoparasites live on the outer body surface of other animals that is host for example bed bugs also ticks are ectoparasites here you can see ticks ticks you will find on the body surface of dogs or cattle like cows buffalo goat etc even human lice are ectoparasites children just now we saw that ectoparasites live on the surface of the host animals but endoparasites live inside the body of the host animals the word endo itself means inside for example round worm like ascaris tapeworms etc 
live inside the human intestine and suck their nutrition. So that's all for today dear students. I hope you have understood whatever is taught to you and you are very much clear with the new terms being brought to you. So based on today's video, you have to solve this following assignment in your science notebook. So thanks for watching dear students. And yes, if you have forgotten to hit the like button, do hit it. And please do not forget to share and subscribe to my channel because knowledge sharing is knowledge squaring. And for more updates, please hit the bell icon. Thanks once again.